Exit 20. Respond to a wound down in the vehicle. South 2nd Street, at F Street. think it will never happen to you, but it happens. All it takes is one momentary lapse, a split second, when you stop paying attention. That's all it takes. It's amazing the thoughts that go through your mind in 30 seconds. Uh, the first of which, when as soon as I landed on the ground and I realized what happened, I realized this is it. This is how I'm going to die. And I remember thinking how fast it happens. Um, my next thought was my family, my wife, Monique, and my two children, my son, Dylan, who had just turned two the week before, and my daughter, Taylor, who was about to turn three a month later. And I realized that they were going to grow up without me and that I wouldn't be there for them. Most of the time, a firefighter that gets injured from electricity, it's usually an unseen wire. It's an automobile accident, motor vehicle accident that occurs. You don't recognize that it hit a pole. There's a line down. He goes to open the door to get the victim out because he's in a hurry. That's his, that's his mindset. That's his brain working. Doesn't recognize that there's a wire across anywhere in the metal. It could be the hood. Nowhere near the door he's opening. The minute he touches that door, he's got his boots on the floor, on the ground, he's a victim. If you see somebody that's had an electrical injury, don't go in there and try to rescue him. Electricity is bad <laughs> You're going to get hurt. So make sure that there's no wire contact. Make sure there's somebody there helping you so you're not a victim as well. So we respond to a call with power lines down. We arrive on scene. We see power lines lying across the street. Somebody was cutting trees in their backyard, snapped the power lines. So we uh, pretty much secure the area and we're just staging and we're waiting for Edison to arrive. As we're sitting there waiting, this lady that lives next door to where the power lines were down or the trees were down, calls me over to her house and tells me that she has a tree in front of her house, maybe about 10 feet high, tells me that it's smoldering. Some limbs are smoldering. So I walk up and I look at the tree and the, some of the limbs, at the, the tips were smoldering. So I walk back to the fire engine and let my engineer know what's going on, put my gloves on and coat, and we walk back over there. And <clears throat> looking at the tree, the leaves that were smoldering were high enough where I can reach. And I reached up with my right hand broke the limb that was smoldering and next to that was another limb small limb some leaves were smoldering I reached up with my left hand well there was a wire in their high voltage power line that was in, in their camouflage because it was only the size of a cable TV wire I didn't see so that got stuck to my hand I knew exactly what's going on I started backpedaling I'm trying to fight the wire off and I can see a halo of electricity around my whole body. I mean, I can hear the noise and knew exactly what was going on. I was able, actually able to know that if I don't get off this wire, I'm going to die. So I started backpedaling and I tripped and landed on my back. Afterward, I found out that my engineer, my acting captain at the time, ran up with the metal clipboard that he had and threw the clipboard and hits the wire and knocks the wire off of me. When the ambulance arrives, I get up myself and jump on the ambulance on the gurney and I start telling them, let's go, my hand's burning. All I can feel was my hand burning. What was funny, I never looked over at my hand. I just can feel it burning. Um, 
they took me into the hospital, to the district hospital. From there, once I arrived there, they really didn't know I had exit wounds yet till I got to the hospital and I kind of started feeling the pain. I started telling them, you know, feeling pain on my back and my calves and they turned me over and I can see the exit wounds. And they um, transported me to UMC, University Medical Center in Fresno, burn center. I spent six weeks there, had nine surgeries, um, had a, that led to an amputation of my left hand and approximately seven exit wounds. Any, any call we respond to now with power lines down, I can see that everyone is so cautious and really make sure they stay back till a utility company or Edison arrives and make sure that the power's off before we even get near it or you know deal with any, any type of uh, power lines. I was working as an acting captain that day. My fireman was brought into my station that morning as a personnel switch. Um, so we actually weren't supposed to work together that day. Uh, he had cut the fence, we saw the logs down. I chose the one I thought was gonna be the easier of the two to, to move. About 10 foot long, about a foot in diameter. Stood at the end of it, bent down, picked it up, took one step and stepped on what we realized later was the source of the, the cause of the fire, which is a down power line. The wire that I actually laid down is this actual wire itself. This was part, actually the wire that was cut from the line that I laid, I fell down on. It's not much bigger than a coat hanger. And you can imagine something like this laying in the black of a, of a brush fire or on the asphalt of a street. It's very difficult to see, very easy to be camouflaged. But to realize that this is normally a 12,000 volt line, because it was down and broken, I received 7,400 volts of this. But it's amazing how much this little wire can actually carry. This is the back of one of the pant legs, the left leg. Um, these were actually exit, part of the exit wounds. Um, it still has enough heat to generate to burn your skin, burn the tissues as it travels through your body, burn two layers of Nomex material, and still make holes. When we first arrived and did the face-to-face -face with the first engine, ca engine captain and indicated where those lines were, we thought that was the only set we were dealing with, not realizing there was potentially more lines down. My only recommendation is you take a real good hard look and you count the lines going in and you count the lines going out. And if that, those numbers don't match, then something's missing. You've got to watch every step you take when you're around those environments. I mean, every step you take could be the last one. Every time, everything you reach out and touch could be the last thing you reach out and touch. Use the buddy system. Never send out someone on their own to scout out part of the incident. Because if I had gone down with nobody around me, it, the outcome would have been much different. I've seen in our department, because of my incident, it's a lot on the forefront of everyone's mind. So when we're on incidents like that, it's very, very aware of, of these types of things. A structure fire I was on just a few months ago and wires were down near the home. It was made very obvious to every single person on that incident scene that the wires were there and everyone had to identify where those were. So there was no doubt in anybody's mind where that hazard lo was located. You know, it really brings home how valuable every day is. Um, you know, every day is a gift. Um, you know, don't waste any moment of any day. Don't put things off. You don't know when the, the next time you go on duty and you kiss your wife and your kids goodbye if it's going to be the last time. So cherish every moment you have with them. Because when you go, the only things you really get to take with you, like the saying says, is you can't take it with you. The only thing you get to take with you is the, is the memories of time spent with family and friends. So enjoy it.